What's up everybody, it's FYGP and today I have a video for you guys on German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock who is of the Green Party in Germany yeah, and she's gonna say Germany is at war with Russia Yeah, that is what she's gonna tell you yeah and then they make fun of Russia when they say that they're battling all of NATO well that's exactly the case Actually, Jimmy Dore had a great video on it, so perhaps we can take a look at that. But first, I just want to remind you who Annalena Baerbock is. Annalena Baerbock uh, has said this in last year when asked about support for Ukraine. But if I give the promise to people in Ukraine, we stand with you as long as you need us then I want to deliver, no matter what my German voters think, but I want to deliver to the people of Ukraine. And this is why, for me, it's important to be always very frank and clear. And this means every measure I'm taking, I have to be clear that this holds on as long as Ukraine needs me. We are facing now a winter time where we will be challenged as democratic politicians. People will go on the street and say, we cannot pay our energy prices. And I will say, yes, I know. So we help you with social measures. But I don't want to say, okay, then we stop the sanctions against uh, Russia. We will stand with Ukraine, and this means the sanction will stay also in winter time, even if it gets really tough for po politicians. No matter what the German voter thinks, no matter what the German voter thinks. Just want to play that part again. To deliver to the people of Ukraine, as long as you need us then I want to deliver, no matter what my German voters think, but I want to deliver to the people of Ukraine. And this is... I want to deliver to the people of Ukraine. Yes, because Ukraine is the most important thing in the world. It's more important than the German voter. Also, it doesn't matter how hard it gets for politicians, because we will still be wasting your money away on a needless proxy war. Yeah, that's uh, that's your German foreign minister for you. You can be really proud of her. And now she said, we are at war with Russia. I'm going to let J Jimmy Dore do the covering of this one. We're here with Aaron Mate, and it turns out this proxy war in Ukraine, they're not even calling it, they're not even pretending anymore. They're just saying we're at war with them. And he, here's the foreign minister of Germany saying that Germany is at war with Russia, just saying it. And so it's very interesting because this was all this was all predicted. The war in Ukraine now was actually planned. They actually wanted it. Who wanted it? NATO wanted this. Germany wanted this. Well, how do we know? Well, first of all, here's a video from 2014. So tell people who this is, Aaron. So this is George Friedman. He is the founder of a firm called Stratfor, which is a private intelligence firm, very close ties to U.S. intelligence. Remember Pete Sehan? We covered him. He was the vice president there. So, yeah, Friedman. And this is from 2014. He said this. Listen to this. So. The primordial interest of the United States, over which for a century we have fought wars, the first, second Cold War, has been the relationship between Germany and Russia, because united they are the only force that could threaten us, and to make sure that that doesn't happen. Therefore, it's not an accident that General Hodges, who's been appointed to be blamed for all of this, uh, is talking about prepositioning troops in Romania, Bulgaria, Poland and the Baltics. This is the intermarium, the from the Black Sea to the Baltic that Pilsudski dreamt of. This is this is the solution for the United States. The issue to which we okay, I just need to pause it right there. See, he says some really important stuff. So the recreation of the intermarium. Now uh, this also signals that the U.S. is going to transition from using Germany as their main sort of pawn in Europe to using Poland as their main pawn in Europe. And Poland is a big country. It has close to 50 million people. So and they will be armed with US weapons. Now they get a lot of that as a consequence of this war, because also the war is to shuffle 
old European military equipment and ex-Soviet equipment from Soviet countries to Ukraine and then replace this equipment with US-made weapons, which they're selling to Poland, the Baltic countries, Romania, Bulgaria, as we speak. We don't have the answer is what will Germany do? So the real wild card in Europe is that as the United States builds its cordon sanitaire, not in Ukraine, but to the West, and the Russians try to figure out how to leverage the Ukrainians out, we don't know the German position. Germany is in a very peculiar position. Its former uh, Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder is on the board of Gazprom. Not good. Uh, Not they good. have a very complex relationship to the Russians. And as he said, the only thing that could rival U.S. hegemony, hegemony, excuse me, uh, is an alliance or at least close cooperation between Russia and Germany. Why? Because Russia has the natural resources that Germany needs, and Germany has the technological know-how that Russia needs. The Germans themselves don't know what to do. They must export. The Russians can't take up the export. On the other hand, if they lose the free trade zone, they need to build something different. For the United States, the primordial fear is Russian capital, Russian technology. I mean, German technology and German capital, Russian uh, natural resources, uh, Russian manpower as the only combination that has for centuries scared the hell out of the United States. So how does this play out? Well, the U.S. has already put its cards on the table. It is the line from the Baltics to the Black Sea. So it is the line from the Baltics to the Black Sea. Not Ukraine. No, we're talking about the Baltic countries, Poland, Romania, and Bulgaria. The eastern flank countries, as they're called by NATO. That guy is letting the cat out of the bag. He's explaining that what the United States economically, the hegemon of United States imperialism, what it threatens that is Germany coming together with its technology and Russia and Russia's natural resources to then become an economic force that the United States couldn't compete with. So in order to uh, squelch that the United States NATO has decided to make germ try to get Germany to go to war with Russia in Ukraine and that is exactly what has happened and that's exactly what this is that's why this is Germany's at war with Russia let me just tell you a little bit about it Our okay so yeah this is of course also uh, the new German government has been brought in to pretty much do this it is quite obvious that this is the case because under Angela Merkel you had Russian and German cooperation in many areas, in many economic areas. You obviously had uh, the ex-German Chancellor Gerhard Schröder working directly for Gazprom. So you can't have none of that. You cannot have any. That is why the current puppets, uh, you know, of Klaus Schwab, such as uh, Olaf Scholz and Annalena Baerbock and Habeck, they're brought in to destroy this. And they're working against their own national interests. They're working against the interest of the German people to have cheap energy, cheap, reliable energy from Russia. That is what it is about. Arguing in favor of sending tanks to Kiev, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock said the European Union countries were fighting a war against Russia. Wow. Yeah, there you have it. That's just an admission right there. Yes. We are at war with Russia. Yeah. Uh, also, I want to just add that Annalena Baerbock is a green. She's a green. One of her main campaign promises was actually to not send weapons into war-torn areas or war areas. Kriegsgebiete, as they call it in German. That is, was one of her main promises. But what do you know is, uh, is Germany doing? They're allowing the flow of arms into Ukraine with the Leopard 2s right now. U.S. and EU officials have... It also goes to show you how some of the Greens, they are the biggest war warmongers ever. Uh, I remember back during the Yugoslav war, uh, you had the German Greens once again advocating 
for going to war, like not once again, but like this is just a repeat of history basically. So in 1999, before the bombing and also before in the first Yugoslav war, you had some of the most hawkish people were the German Greens. And what was their reason for war? It was all under the pretext of humanitarian intervention. It was in Yugoslavia that way, and the same is now the case in Ukraine. They want to, of course, like help Ukraine win, because if Ukraine wins, it's all going to be fine and dandy, and then the, everything is going to be amazing, right? <laughs> Except you will have, I don't know how many times higher gas prices than you have right now previously gone out of their way to claim they were not a party to the conflict in Ukraine. And therefore, I've said already in the last days, yes, we have to do more to defend Ukraine. Yes, we have to do more also on tanks. But the most important and crucial part is what is that we do it together and that we do not do the blame game in Europe because we are fighting a war against Russia and not against each other. So just to double down and let you know that they've been not only that video tells you they've been planning this since 2014, this also tells you Angela Merkel that we if we add this to Angela Merkel, the former prime minister of Germany's revelations that they were strengthening Ukraine and did not count on the Minsk agreements that we are talking about a war against Russia that was planned in advance. Don't say later that we didn't warn you. Exactly. So what has been revealed most recently is that they said when they did the Minsk agreement, which was the Ukraine's peace agreement with the Donbass, meaning that they would stop bombing them and then they would give the Donbass some independence. And that was the they never stopped doing that. And the reason why they wanted the Minsk agreement was so that they could build up Ukraine's military to get ready for when Russia did invade because they would not stop bombing the Donbass as an, in a breaking the Minsk agreement. So do you, do you see what this is? They've been planning to provoke Russia to invade Ukraine, which is what they did. And they used the Minsk peace agreement to buy time to help bulk up Ukraine's defenses. That's exactly what they did. So Foreman German Chancellor Angela Merkel told German media in early December of the 2014 ceasefire brokered by Berlin and Paris was actually a ploy to give Ukraine valuable time for a military buildup. Former French President Francois Hollande has confirmed this, while Ukraine's leader at the time, Poshenko, openly admitted this as well. And here she is, here's the foreign minister gonna admit that she doesn't give a shit what her own citizens in Germany care about. Yeah, we showed that. I uh, want to play a bit of Iron Mate. I don't think I need to add anything here. That's just exceptional analysis by Jimmy Dore right there. Saying that they're at war with Russia now. Uh, isn't, isn't that a tactical mistake to say that? It is, but these aren't rational people. These are people willing to oversee the sabotage of their own economy. Uh, yeah. to fuel a disastrous proxy war in Europe, all because of what? Uh, a bitter hatred toward Russia, and who knows? As you'd say, it, I think it's fair to speculate that there's some pressure or coercion going on behind the scenes, because what else could explain all these politicians lining up to commit economic suicide for the country and to sentence so many more Ukrainians and Russians to die? It doesn't It doesn't make any sense. And, and uh, that clip you played of George Freeman from 2015, he was laying out exactly what the real U.S. goal here is to sever relations between Germany and Russia, not because Germany and Russia militarily would be a threat to the U.S., but as he explains, their economies would be a threat to U.S. dominance if they work together. And so U.S. policy has been designed to further that goal of undermining Germany and Russia. And that's why before Russia invaded Ukraine, there was a huge U.S. campaign to kill the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Uh, Germany resisted that because Germans recognized that this was in their interest. After all, Germany's economy was built with cheap Russian energy. And the U.S. was basically asking Germany to abandon that. And finally, with Russia's invasion, Germany caved to the U.S. And then just to make sure that the Nord Stream 2 wouldn't be flowing again, what happened? It was blown up, which, we are, which we're supposed to forget about. But somebody blew it up. Somebody with an interest in blowing it up. Well, we all know who that is. It's the U.S. And Exactly right. I will leave the full video in the description so you can go watch it yourselves. Uh, this is it for me today. Um, see you guys another time. This is FYGP tuning out.